The one thing he said in there, and it's actually true, I have never, ever had a problem with Stephen A. Smith. Now, what he doesn't know is I still don't have a problem with Stephen A. Smith, but I do have one issue. And that one issue is this. If you addressed it truthfully, it will go away. So it's looking like Marcellus Wiley came out and responded to Stephen A. Smith in the comments that he made on The Breakfast Club. I just did a video covering that, but just in case if you missed it, let's highlight that clip again right here. Here's the video. Now, now some weeks ago, uh, something you said, what you said several times, you wrote about it in your book. You talked about, you know, your experience with Max Kellerman working mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. And I saw a reaction from uh, Marcellus Wiley, and he mm -hmm. said, you got rid of Max Kellerman because Max wasn't dumb and white. Okay. In terms of what Marcellus Wiley said, now that I will direct, I will address directly. And I only have one thing to say. He and I worked together, um, got a lot of respect for him. I know the man he was talking about that was his best friend. I get all of that. No problem. Here's my only issue. For a black man to sit up there and say another black man is scared of somebody's intellect. Come on, bro. That's just the line you cross. And I have nothing more to say other than that. That's sad mm -hmm. that he would go that route. Um, I guess that he's going to get attention because obviously everybody who watches The Breakfast Club every chance we get and he's going to see, um, talk about it. I'm certainly not going to argue with him. Um, I've always had a lot of respect for him. Me and Marcellus Wiley have never had one issue. Um, and I don't care what support he has for his boy or anybody else. I, I get that. I support my boys too. But I would never in a million years say that one black man is scared of the intellect of a white man. Damn. I would never, ever, ever do that. And for him to do something like that, that's on him. Forget not as smart, because mm -hmm. most people are not as smart uh, as, 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 as some other people, I guess. But that don't mean we're devoid of high intellect and intelligence. Mm -hmm. But to say that I fear the intelligence mm. of any man, any man. I've debated Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. I've debated Cornell West. Mm -hmm. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I've been on the phone with President Obama. I've, 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 I've debated political pundits, and I'm not even a political aficionado. We're talking sports, y'all. This mm -hmm. ain't science class. This ain't, you know, this, this, uh, I mean, this ain't geometry or trigonometry or something. This ain't, you know, we, we ain't in law school trying to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. This is sports. Scared of the, intel of the intellect and intelligence of a white man. Okay. Okay, so Stephen A. Smith was responding to Marcellus Wiley, and he was pretty much just saying that Marcellus Wiley was chasing clout. And he also had to bring in a race card as well. And Marcellus Wiley had responded to what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Listening to that, the first thing I know I noticed, and I'm sure you guys did as well, is damn, Stephen A. Smith is sidestepping the truth. Damn, Stephen A. Smith ain't trying to run into this truthfully. Damn, Stephen A. Smith doing a lot of jump cutting. <laughs> I mean, Barry Sanders out there in terms of talking about this issue properly. One thing he said in there, and it's actually true, I have never, ever had a problem with Stephen A. Smith. Now, what he doesn't know is I still don't have a problem with Stephen A. Smith, but I do have one issue. And that one issue is this. If you addressed it truthfully, it will go away, but you haven't, right? So now you got to stop talking about it completely and just take the L for lying about Max. Now you can hide under the guise and you can hide under the disguise of, oh, my boss has told me to stop talking about it. But really it's because you're taking the L on this max issue and i get it big dog i've taken l's before too welcome to sports big dog all right so in summary i heard him deflect use this straw man argument play victim stephen a smith playing victim mm. and ultimately using the race card not just any race card though he used the big joker in the deck and they're like the bs has got to stop okay now, I only made that video for Max Kellerman because you kept lying and then you try to punk him out, especially when he's not even at ESPN anymore. He's not even on the network anymore. And you still had the audacity to go on Joe Budden's podcast 
and flex on them. Let's check out that clip right here. What do you say to the people say they saw the tension between you and Max developing on air before his departure from the show? Did you hear any of that? I heard some of it. I would take full responsibility for that. That's totally my fault. Okay. And the reason why it was my fault because I didn't like working with him, man. It's just that damn simple. I didn't like it. I thought the show was stale. Um, I thought that we had flatlined when it came to the public at large. And I'm trying to win. I mean, I didn't want to go from number one to number two when Skip left. I, that's not what I wasn't having that. That shit was not going to happen. Did anything in the numbers say that, that you might have been headed that way? No, but to me it did. Creatively. It, to me it did, not just creatively, but the consistency of the number. Got it. In other words, it wasn't going this way. Yeah. It was just there. And so, and so that's what I was feeling. And it was like, you know, listen, I had mad respect from him from the standpoint that White dude, highly intelligent, Ivy League educated from Columbia, smart as a whip, can talk his ass off, can talk about anything. And I get all of that. But you weren't an athlete and you weren't a journalist. And the, the absence of the two components left people wondering, why should we listen to you? Okay. Well, you might have had that figured out on Sports Nation, or you might have had that figured out on another show. But on this show, if you looked at the content emanating in the social stratosphere, meaning YouTube and other components that you use to measure one's cachet, uh, uh, Q ratings, focus groups, all of these different things, it was like I was damn near doing the show by myself because we were oceans apart in terms of cachet. Well, how are you oceans apart from me if you sitting right across from me five days a week for the whole two hours? Because one of us is resonating and one of us is not in that platform. And so for me, I was like, look, this is what it is. And we had a number of conversations, one-on-one, -on -one, many, many times. I know this audience. I know what they're looking for. I know what they need, et cetera, et cetera. At some point, you're going to do what you need to do or you don't. And if you don't do what you need to do, I'm going to get somebody who will. And he never was an athlete. And I just found out from you that he was never a journalist, even though doing public access and being a boxing aficionado and everybody from Mike Tyson on down swearing about how great he was as an analyst and as someone who could break down sports. I guess he wasn't a journalist, but you know who else wasn't a journalist? And it's funny because in this game, I followed Colin Coward in his footsteps to get to Sports Nation. Colin Coward wasn't a pure journalist. Tell me he ain't killing the game. Michelle Beadle, not a pure journalist. Tell me she ain't killing the game. Carissa Thompson, all the people, I mean, I could just keep going. I mean, I mean, people I work with that weren't pure journalists. So it was never about the credentials. It was just simple. Max's presence on that show got to you, Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. Smith was coming on that show very insecure. Just like when Quavo came on a show and he was talking with Kendrick Perkins and they had like this little fun back and forth. Max Kellerman was on the show as well. When Quavo had left the screen, you saw a cut to Stephen A. Smith and he had a complete attitude about that acting like a diva, saying he didn't know anything about that. He didn't like that. And you saw how awkward it was with Molly and Max Kellerman being there, and they was just, like, kind of confused why he was acting yeah, like that. Yes, I love, listen, if we had beef, we would have made hamburgers, and either two things would have happened. Either Quavo would have been grilling, and he would have been serving triple meats, or I would have been grilling and serving little sliders. That's what would have happened if we would have nah, it, it, It's no we, beef, we, it's just a little... It's just a little it, it's just a little lip boxing, okay? It's a little lip boxing, and I'm all cool with it. Like I said, when I used to have to walk in the cafeteria and I had them high water pants on because I couldn't afford the long jeans, I had to be ready to clap back if people used to make fun of me. I'm used to it. We all, we all, we all came from nothing, big bro. You know that we all came from nothing, <laughs> and we here today. You feel and, what and I'm you're saying? both so doing your thing, onward and upward. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Who knew first take would become Switzerland? Quavo, we appreciate you. <laughs> Good luck to your Hawks, Big Perk. I'm sure I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for the time. Culture 3, it's out tomorrow. All right, uh, gentlemen.
Were you not entertained? That was entertaining. I wasn't. You were not entertained? No, I wasn't. Oh, I was entertained. I didn't like it one bit. Why is that? Because I don't. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Hmm. I don't. I had nothing to do with that. I didn't know anything about it. Okay. You want to you want to talk the games? Who wins tonight? Brooklyn, Brooklyn will win. I'm, I'm sorry. Milwaukee is the only chance that they get swept. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with Milwaukee tonight, and I'm going to go with Utah to win game two. Milwaukee's getting swept. They're not competing. And Getting uh, swept? Yeah, Milwaukee's getting swept. Really? Yeah, it got you don't worse. Think you and it's okay because you had the power. It was your show. Just say, hey, I don't want to work with you anymore because I'm just not feeling this, and you got to go. I actually did that one time with one of my co-hosts. We talked to the bosses. I told the bosses first, told my agent. We had the same agent, told him. That was it. I didn't go on a tour <laughs> and tell everybody anything else. I just had the power. I had the leverage, and I wanted to work with someone else. That's all you had to say, dog, years ago. But nah, you know why? Like I said before, the truth is simple. That would have been too simple. That would have been true. Lies are complex. That's why you still kept talking about it. All right. So I had to make that video just because I thought you could be a little more decent than that. What's your power? I didn't want your pride to get to that point where not only are you lying about something, but you're flexing with those lies. Here's a layer that I didn't discuss before, but I want to bring up. Because he went on his multi-year campaign, he still, I guess it's over now, breakfast cuz because he said the bosses said, stop, enough is enough. But not only did he go on that cam campaign for years talking about Max, but guess what he also did? And this is crazy. For years, working with Max, what well, they worked together, five years or so? He sabotaged that show because he didn't want to work with Max and couldn't get his way. Listen to Stephen A. Smith. He said this before. He said, I went to the bosses many a times. And finally, I gave him an ultimatum. So think about it. From day one when you don't like Max. All those clips, all those times we've seen him just irked at just Max's presence. Max could be right on the argument. Max could be saying something logical, saying something funny. And he left them out to hang for, for dry. Left them out to dry. Left them out there just... Swim for yourself, fight for yourself, fend for yourself. That's sabotage. Because when you do this thing, it's a song and dance, right? You got a partner. You got to be in, in lockstep with them. Like you got to know what their role is. They got to know what your role is, right? We got to be pulling in the same direction, right? Imagine working for how long? I don't know, months, years with a guy who's trying to sabotage you because since the guy's not feeling you, he's passive aggressive. I've seen clips. I remember watching. I was like, damn, why you don't like Max? Damn, he mad at Max. Damn, he taking it out on the show. The show suffered. And y'all still were number one. And Max never would disrespect you back. He would just, hey, man, that's who he is, not who I am. Okay, so that's not the full video. I just wanted to clip out some of the stuff that I saw on Marcellus Wiley's YouTube channel. If you want to watch the video in full, go over to Marcellus Wiley's YouTube channel and watch his full video. I'll have the link to that down below. I suggest that you guys should go check it out because it's a lot more to break down in this situation. So with that being said, guys, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That really does help the YouTube channel continue to grow. Hit that like button for me if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe up as well if you're new to my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. And we out, guys. Peace.